First thing that we need to do to get databases working is to actually create a database. So I have PHP my admin installed that I'm going to go ahead and just use to create a new database with a user. But you can go ahead and feel free to use whatever tool that you're comfortable with for the MySQL environment. So I'm going to just create a user called Booklist. We'll set the host to localhost and then I'm just going to create another password and just keep the same thing, Booklist. And then I want to make sure that we create the database with the same name and grant all privileges. Now again, there's many ways you can create the database, but this is just a really simple way, a really easy way to do it. Okay, now that our database is in place, we want to add a table. So I'm just going to go ahead and move over to that particular schema. And we just want to issue some SQL here. So what we're doing is we're creating one single table called book, and it's going to contain some data in it, such as the title and the author and an ID, that kind of thing. Um, obviously, if this was a more complex system, we would probably move authors off into their own table so that it's normalized as well. But for now, we're just going to be working with one table since this is a more simplistic view of the data side of Zend. I pasted in this book DDL to create this book table. Essentially, however you want to create your table, you can use a tool or you can use uh, an SQL DDL statement similar to this. But essentially, we want to have an ID, which is our primary key. We're going to auto increment that so we're not worried about keeping sequences or other things uh, to increment that. And we're going to create a title and an author, which are not null. They're going to be var varchars, and we're just setting those to 255 at this point as far as a length. So go ahead and create this. And make sure that our table's there. And we have our book table. Currently, there is nothing in our book table. If we browse that, we have zero rows in there. So next, we want to add some information. So you can add information in here any way you want, but I'm just going to go ahead and pull some authors and book titles from Amazon's one of their top 100 lists and just populate a few books into this table for now. All right, so I'm going to insert a handful of books. And again, these were just pulled from Amazon, so I don't necessarily, I guess, promote or not promote these books. They're just books that I found on a list, bestsellers list. And I'm going to put in eight or so for now. We, we can add some later. But um, essentially, we just want to get some data in there. So when we start pulling from our Zen model, we'll be able to see that we actually have data. And that's actually going all the way from our browser down to our database. So again, you can add whatever data you want. But just try to get you know 8 to 10 rows in there for now and get our book table populated. OK, so there's all my books. And that kind of wraps up our database side of things. So one thing I'd like to note here is if you are doing a lot of database work, and obviously this is a really simple example, your application will probably be more complex on the data side, you should definitely look into using a database migration and a database seeding tool to handle these kind of things. You don't want to have to manually create your database structures and do inserts because as you move from development to test to production, you want to make sure that there's a way to automatically get your database in sync with your code as you move from environment to environment. And there's lots of information out there on database migration, so I'm not going to cover that at this point, but you can definitely find database migrations for any tool or platform out there, whether you're working in Java, Ruby, or the PHP environment.